Hero has begun to release the physical packs in stores across America, and that's most likely going to be happening in the UK sometime next week, closer to the full release. There's going to be more wanting to get involved, and that means that more of you will want to get some of the tips that will help you push yourself forward and become top of the top when that does happen. So in this video, we're going to discuss some of those tips that you need to know that will give you the best advantage. So let's get started. Welcome everyone, my name is Andy, and I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to come watch this video on the channel. Just before we get going, if you are enjoying the content and you want to support me further, you can hit that subscribe button. If you want to support me further than that, you can join the membership. I'm going to release a video yesterday about all of this and just talking about it a little bit further. But I was climbing a Monroe with my friend. It took a little bit longer than expected. The conditions were a lot different to what we had expected as well. But I did have a good time and I wanted to just release this video instead. You could all get this information before more of the physical packs are actually out. The first one I'm going to discuss to you is to pay attention about the score. Now, those of you who have been a part of the digital drop and are probably involved in Hero in some way will most likely know that mint numbers matter. But I've seen a a lot of people on Vive continue to make this mistake and the same on Hero. The lower mints that you get on the cards relate to more points that you're going to get on the leaderboard. So if you got an A1 over common, you're most likely going to get more points than you would with a high mint on something like a rare. So paying attention to the mints that you're actually getting are going to allow you to actually sell this for more. Usually the lower the mint, the more score, the more that you're going to be able to charge on the market for it. Have a look in the market, see what other people are selling your sort of range or score for in that means you'll be able to determine what you can put it up at. If you put it up at floor price, you're probably guaranteeing that that will sell out instantly. But if you're willing to wait a little bit longer to find someone who's really aiming for that top of the leaderboard, then you'll probably find that buyer get a lot more for what you've actually got and therefore make more profit for yourself to spend on whatever you want. Competition and gamification and all of this is really, really important. And because the leaderboards are going to give rewards to those with the physical packs as well, and it's a completely different leaderboard to the digital one, that means the lower mints that you get because there are so many more mints with 6 million in total supply. If you manage to get an A1 or sub 100 in one of these physical cards, you are really going to make a good bit of profit with that. There's going to be people willing to pay big money for that sort of stuff, especially if the hype keeps going with Hero. And it'll be interesting to see what prices these sort of set at moving forward. In Hero itself, you can actually search for premium mint numbers within the filtering for what you're doing. So this is another way that you can actually take advantage of this. Pay price yours, it's somewhere that a buyer would be tempted to purchase it for. All I'm saying is when you open packs or when you're getting the packs, ensure you're looking at the mint numbers because they're going to not only help determine rate just as an uncommon, common, rare, superior, anything like that, you're going to be able to see it in a different light when it comes to the mint number. One is the market moves just like any other market in this NFT space. Hype makes the market move quite a lot. So when good news is happening, then the market usually shoots up. If people tend to buy into quite a lot of the same thing, then again, the market tends to shoot up because more people FOMO into that. When there's a little bit of downturn and people have already bought in and the hype has boomed, there's usually quite a downtrend that sort of finds its other support levels higher than it did when it started before the hype, but lower than the top of the hype had happened. So this market, just like any other market, moves in pretty similar ways. Because Hero is so new, this is just going to be the case too. The best way for you to actually pay attention and to understand this even further is to stay up to date with what's going on. So this is going into the spaces, listening to their Discord talks, seeing what the mods are saying, what the people who have created Hero are saying, because you're going to be able to understand where their mindset's at, what they're giving out, and sometimes you get a little bit of a nugget in there that allows you to take advantage before everyone else does. Let's take example for the physical packs themselves. They're all going to be coming out, I think, on the 12th for Americans. And in the UK, we're getting it between the 18th and the 20th for release anyway. At this point, the market is going to be flooded with cards for people opening these packs, scanning them onto Hero, and then trying to sell them off if that is their aim to do, or people buying in to get low mints. So at this point, it's most likely going to be the case that a lot of these bigger cards are going to significantly drop in the beginning before we start to see those buyers really rush in to get the cards to increase their score on that leaderboard. Trends happen all the time. Things rise, fall, news makes it go up, some news makes it go down, people get bullish, bearish, and it's so much more and it's so much more complicated than just this little snippet in the video. But markets do move pretty similarly. And if you've been on Vivi and you've just gone onto Hero and you've watched some of my videos on the market, it's probably going to translate and correlate quite well. If you've not and you're someone who's really new to Hero, then this is your best opportunity to start learning market trends themselves. Why things move, why they don't. So by you taking notes of things, what happens, why it happens, and then your own basic understanding, you're going to become better and sharper at making those quick decisions that 
that will give you the returns that you're looking for. The third one is to keep your cards sealed, especially the good ones. Now, if you're new to collecting or card collecting in general with physical stuff, you probably don't understand maybe why you want to keep them in good condition or how to keep them in good condition. Because that was something that I didn't know when I first got into it. And I only got into it a few months ago. So I'm really new and I'm no sort of expert. But the card holders are one of the best ways to keep the condition of the card in the best way as possible. And Hero have actually said that they want to sort of help make the sale of the cards match up with the digital. So if they can get the physical and the digital to work well together, maybe they can have their own marketplace when it comes to that sort of stuff. By you keeping low, especially the good cards in good condition, and then being able to trade the digital version, if you do plan on selling the physical and digital together, and that's what the buyer wants, then by doing so, you're going to be able to keep it in a better condition, get more of a price for it, and therefore make more of a return on the card that you're actually holding. Look, I'm going to leave a link to both US and UK card holders that you can get for yourself to actually hold these packs in so that you're keeping your cards safe and you're sort of getting them to the place you want to go. And the fourth one, as we've spoken about, it's the price has fallen once the physicals actually arrive. Now we've talked about hype, of course, and that's what we're sort of understanding a little bit more about the market trends. But once the market is flooded, there's obviously going to be a lot more cards on the market to purchase. And this is where things like lower mints become more significant. You can charge more for them. There'll probably be a lot of buyers coming in because they can buy them for so cheap, especially if people have come in here from the digital sets too. They might have a lot of money to actually spend on those sorts of things. So I'm guessing there's going to be quite a lot of hype in buying and selling when it comes to the physicals being released. Of course, the US are getting them on the 12th of April, a week before that we are getting them in the UK here. So the market is probably going to be able to solidify itself a little bit before being flooded again by the UK. And I'm not too sure on Brazil and India just yet and how popular they are there, but it will be interesting to see. If you are buying cards right now and you're in America and someone who's got them, this might be a good time for you to sell cards to get liquidity ready for the full market to get them all. Understand if you've got low mints, you maybe want to hold them for a little while longer as more users come into Hero and understand what the game is. There's more collectors coming in, so the price might actually rise up. But there's probably things right now that you could sell for a hefty profit considering what you may be able to sell that for once everyone in the market who has ordered these things is actually in the supply. This is going to be important details to actually take part in as it goes through. I'm certainly going to be taking some notes down on how this market moves, especially once all the supply comes in, once more people are buying in, once this thing gets more popular, if this thing gets more popular, and how to take profits in the right means. If I was someone in America right now and I was able to get packs, I would be looking to make my return on the packs that I'm currently buying and then holding some of the things that I believe will be more worthwhile over the long run. They have said there's going to be things for rewards, for holders, for the full sets, for different things in those areas. So it is important, again, to keep on top of the information to understand maybe what is your best move at this time and how to move forward with what you want to do. Alongside that, I know I've said to sell the maybe less significant things, but that doesn't mean that you could potentially buy into extremely significant things. If you find a really good deal for a low mint and it's just something you're willing to hold for a while, you might be able to really snag that at a great price so that when these buyers do come in to try to get the top of the leaderboard and start hurrying to get there, this will be your best route to actually make that return that you have purchased this for previously. Personally, I am not buying from the physical hybrid set at the moment purely because there's so little percentage of the market who's actually got these right now. Once the full release is out, I'm definitely going to be buying some stuff up, try to get on top of that leaderboard as my aim is to get in the top 100 for the hybrid set, but I know that's going to take some time and I know it's probably going to be quite challenging to do. So that is something that you could pay attention to to get a lot of those scores on the low mints to then sell them once all these buyers start to come in for those rewards that people are going to be getting. And finally, I'm going to talk about the digital drops. Now, they have said that each digital drop is going to be happening every month. So there's going to be a new one every month and the whitelists for those are going to reset every month. So if you manage to get a whitelist in the previous one, you're not going to be able to get it in the second one unless, of course, you enter in the competitions, you win and you manage to actually get whitelisted again. So they're all going to reset and there's nothing to worry about on that front. And again, why it's important to keep up to date with all the new information that's coming out so that you can get the best chance to do so. I think I entered in about 15 or 20 of the competitions going on in Discord and out with of Discord to get that whitelist spot for the first digital drop. And I'm going to be doing the same again with going into as many as I possibly can to give myself the best percentage chances of doing so. These next digital drops, I don't believe are going to be as significant or as popular as the first ones. I still believe they'll sell out really well. I think some of the cards will do fantastic too, but for the most part, it's usually the first of the first that will do the best out of them all. Those are the ones that will really stand the test of time. Those are the ones that people will be after when they come into this that have the most significance. So I do believe that you probably will
will be able to make return on the next few digital drops, but it's something to pay close attention to to make sure you're not over leveraging yourself and over pushing yourself when it comes to your financial investment that you're putting into these next few drops. There's cards that have never been released before on the blockchain and having them as FA on these, they could definitely be worth more. I would say to pay close attention to how people react in the market to these new digital drops, how they work, the rewards that they're going to be given out for them and how you can kind of move forward with that knowing you're putting yourself in the right position. Understand this is probably more of a basic video for those who have been involved in Hero for a couple of days now, but there's going to be a lot of new users coming into this space. There's probably people who will see it physically and want to give it a go to. So I wanted to make a video just to help those people actually understand a little bit more about Hero, what to pay attention to, and just maybe how to understand the market and the digital side of things better for this space. Let me know if there's any tips you would like me to include in future videos, because I would love to cover more about Hero and what it is. I know the video on the screen and it will be something you love to watch. Have a fantastic day.